All right, so how do we make these thumbnails and roughs and uh, this comp? Well, uh, for the thumbnails and in fact for the, the roughs, you can use any medium you want as long as you can get it to me in the Photoshop document when it's done. So um, I actually really encourage you to use a pen and paper for the thumbnails because the thumbnails are supposed to be really fast and loose and uh, it's really easy to get dragged into Photoshop and start fiddling with other stuff. But in order to use thumbnails, you would either need a camera that you can access or um, a scanner. And if you have either of those, feel free. Otherwise, in just a minute, I'll show you another way to do thumbnails and we'll walk through you know, a whole bunch of different things you can do. You're probably thinking I have a trackpad on my laptop what on earth am I supposed to do? Don't worry about it. We're going to cover that in just a second. But for those of you who have a camera uh, on your phone, for example, that can take a relatively decent uh, photo, um, you may want to take that photo during the day when you can get some light on your paper and see what's going on. Otherwise, you know, just put it near or underneath the lamp and uh, take that photo, Photoshop it up with some curves or levels, and you'll be you'll be in the clear. Um, so let's talk about uh, if you were doing this. So. First off, how to do this assignment. Uh, so first you've selected your uh, uh, an event for a final project, even if it's not the final project you're going to be doing. So again, don't worry about that. See the attachment, the extra attachment. You may change your mind after the assignment and choose a different event for your final project. That's perfectly acceptable. Once you know what event you want to do a poster for, think about some design possibilities. So uh, part one, thumbnails. Let's start thinking. Take a few sheets of paper and use a pen or pencil. I'd recommend a pen. Just kind of fly through these, cross them out as you go. Draw out 25 thumbnails. So just keep drawing little squares. And again, this is if you have a scanner or a camera. And we'll we'll touch on what to do uh, otherwise in just a second. Uh, let me get these open. So again, you know, this is just five rows of five squares drawn out and they're not even all the same size. That's fine. So draw those, draw out 25 squares, you know, rectangles, try to make them paper sized. Uh, you may want to do uh, 30 or more, depending on how you're doing it. It's, it's fine. Uh, don't worry if they're crooked or not. It, it's all going to be good. Uh, think about your design and doodle it out. When the box is full, doodle another one. Do a variation. Do something completely different. Keep doodling until the sheet is full. If something goes wrong, cross out the box and move on to another one. There's no need to get another sheet out. Just go for it. This, And if you need to, grab another piece of paper. Just keep going. So if you don't need to, don't worry about it. If you need to, don't worry about it. Just keep getting more paper. Uh, the whole process will take you around half an hour to an hour. Um, and if you have a scanner when you're done, scan it in. Uh, even though we're not turning in anything at 600 pixels per inch for this assignment, I would recommend scanning it in at 600 pixels per inch. Then level it until it's relatively legible. Uh, if you have a phone that has a camera or a camera, better yet, just take a picture of it. Uh, if you don't have a scanner, that's fine. You'll need to level it so that I can actually see what's going on a little bit. But um, it's mostly just a record that you worked on it, so don't sweat the, the small stuff. Then you're going to want to circle four of your favorite ideas with the red pencil tool. And this is important. A lot of people immediately use like the, pen, the brush tool uh, for that, but uh, I'd, I'd prefer the pen tool. So what does that look like? The pen tool, the pencil tool. So Let's say that I liked this one. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to make another layer. You know what? Actually, I'm not even going to make another layer. I'm just going to do this. Under the brush, uh, you have the pencil tool. It's just the brush pencil tool. And I'm just going to select the standard pencil. And this pencil is way too big. Shrink it down. I'm not even going to worry about the kind of red. I'm just going to pick a red. And then I'm going to circle it thusly and if i'm having really wobbly time click hold down shift click hold down shift click hold down shift click and hold down shift and click and then you just do that for uh the four thumbnails that you would like to turn into comps and that's that's it this this is ready to go save out a copy of this, this be you know thumbnails with circles we're going to assemble the whole thing in a bit And so I'm just going to save it as a JPEG right now. We'll resize and worry about all that in a minute. 
Okay, so that's one way you can uh, do it. Um, so when you're done, crop it and resize it uh, so that it's 8.5 inches by 11 inches at 150 pixels per inch. So I guess I closed that a little too soon, huh, everybody? Let's uh, pop that back in. So I would come in and maybe crop it down. And so we're aiming for 8.5 by 11. So I'll do that. I'll just start by doing by cropping it. And I'm going to use a marquee tool and then I'm going to go to image crop. And I'll just crop it down. Now I'm going to go to image canvas size and I'm going to do this. Let's say that I still had like nine inches. Then I'd if it were if it were too much. So let's say that I'd already cropped it and for whatever reason it was too big. Like I had a little thumbnail down here for some reason. I would go up and I would go to image, image size. And I would start by resizing this down after I've cropped it as much as I can to eight and a half by 11 or as close as possible. And then once it's resized with neither of the dimensions larger than necessary. So, and this has to be uh, vertical for once. So this is now smaller than eight and a half by 11. Now, instead of image size, I'm going to go to image canvas size. And now... I'm going to go ahead and do an 8.5 inches by 11 inches. There we go. So this is now the correct size. And this is just the thumbnail. So things like this little line, that's fine. I might do something like level it, you know, so that I get a good contrast so that I can actually see what's going on. And then I'm going to go to image, image size again, now that I've adjusted the canvas size and knock this down to 150 pixels per inch. There we go. And then I would go file, save as, and call it 150 pixels per inch PPI. So now I've got this resized. Great. So uh, that's, that's how you do it if you're scanning it. Now uh, there's a little more information here. Um, so uh, let's let's touch on that part once we go over what to do if you don't have a pen and paper and a camera and you don't have a scanner or any of that stuff and you really just kind of want to get this done what do you do well you start by making something that's the correct dimensions so it'll be 8.5 by 11 I somehow put in 8.6 you want 8.5 by 11 and then your resolution, you're going to start with 600, even though you're going to be eventually cropping it down to 150. All right. So we're going to begin big enough that we can actually see what we're doing. And we're going to do this. I'm going to quickly grab a second window because I've got uh, two screens. So I need to be able to get to what I'm doing. And to do that, I just go window and then I go to arrange a new window. And then that gives me two windows at, or as many windows as I want see these two windows if I take a brush and I draw on one the other will update automatically that's what new window does and whoa I'm just going to uh, use this so that I can go to my second monitor and be out of the way uh, as I start doing some trickier brush stuff so first things first we need some boxes this is actually easier inside of Photoshop than with a pen I'm going to just hold down the shift key and draw out a little box and then hold whoa with the move tool and I held down shift key I was on the brush and in this case the pencil tool is fine uh, hold down the move tool hold down the alt key and that will let me duplicate and hold down the shift key and that will allow me to re uh, constrain where it's going alt and I'm going wherever shift and now I'm just going to the right alt to duplicate again Shift, and now I'm just going to the right. Alt, Shift. Okay, so I've got five of them, and these are all new layers. I'm going to click on the bottom layer, scroll up, hold down Shift, click on the top layer. Now that I've got them all, I'm going to evenly distribute them by going up to the Move Tools options, and I'm going to select, uh, let's see. I want to do... Distribute vertically? No, I need to distribute horizontally. Here it is. Distribute horizontally. And did you see them all wiggle around? So now they they have even spacing, which is cool. Now, what if I want them spaced even better? Well, I can control click to select one, drag one out, control click to select another one, drag it out, 
control click to select that one. So now I've got them kind of spaced, but still weirdly. Again, click the bottom one or the top one, shift click the other direction. So I've got them all selected. And then on the move tools option panel, I have distribute horizontally. There we go. So I've got all these guys, right? I'm going to merge these down. Control E is the shortcut for that. Merge down one, Control E, Control E, Control E, Control E. I've got one layer. Now, again with the move tool, just draw in boxes. I'm just holding down the Alt key to duplicate and then the Shift key to uh, constrain it. And then once I've got all those, I'm going to Shift select all those layers again. And I'm going to distribute them this time vertically. And now they're all evenly distributed. Great time to boop, boop, control E, control E, control E, control E. And I've got them all on one layer and those will be my boxes. And I'm going to save this as uh, thumbnails in progress. So I get my thumbnails. Okay, now, oh my word, what am I to do? Well, I'm going to make a new layer and call it one. Now when I'm done, I'm going to flatten this whole thing, so I'm not going to worry too much about anything. And in fact, I encourage this. Um, if your thumbnail is not working out, leave it. Move on to the next one. Don't erase the one you're working on. And that's the danger of working with pencil. That's the danger with working in Photoshop or Illustrator or any of the computer graphics programs. Heck, if you want to, feel free to use MS Paint on this. I'm fine with it. It's the thumbnail stage. Do whatever you want. If you want to make little um, sculptures out of Play-Doh and take photos of it, that's cool. I just want to see that you're thinking about it. So you can do this a few ways. On my new layer, I'm going to just take a brush and pencil's fine, but what I'm going to do is zoom in and I'm just going to use the mouse. So let's say that I wanted to uh, start building something in here. I don't know, maybe there are some hills and then on the hill might be a windmill. And there we go, and then the text. All right, sufficient, that's it, you're done. That's all you need to do for a thumbnail. All right, so what if you what if your trackpad's just not even letting you do something like this? You're having too many problems. Well, I'm gonna grab the, mag, the uh, polygon lasso tool instead, and I'm just gonna click, and let's say that again, uh, and now I'm going to shift click so that I can make another selection. And I'm going to shift click again to make yet another selection. And still holding down shift, I'm just making selection after selection. And maybe I have a kind of windmill shape. And maybe it has, I'm still holding down shift, some windmill arms. All right and fill that with black and then you'd want some text there you have it so let's say uh, I kind of like the windmill idea let's say we're doing a Don Quixote poster for this so we'll stick with that so we've got a couple of ideas these are actually what I would consider the same uh, I'm not worrying about it though. I just wanted to demonstrate the difference between the brush and the uh, polygon lasso. And if you are full free willing, feel free to use the, the whole lasso. Uh, maybe we want to have uh, Don Quixote on some kind of horse. And I'm drawing this with a mouse so it looks like a dinosaur. So be it. It's a thumbnail. <laughs> so we do a little Don Quixote. Oops. Fill him with black. And look at this beautiful thumbnail. And now we'll give him a little adjusting thing. And let's let's have some fun here. We'll kind of cut around this time. Absolutely beautiful. That's literally all you need for a thumbnail. So we're going to come out and do some text and some text 
and some text. That's a thumbnail. That thumbnail took too long for a thumbnail, but it's still a thumbnail. From a distance, it reads. That's all we need, so we can kind of figure out what's going on. Now, you may look at this and you may go, oh, I don't like the placement of that. Not a problem. Just do it again with a slightly different placement. In fact, I'm going to do this as a few more chunks so that I can maybe uh, fill out the space a little bit more. Maybe like that. And maybe I want to show his leg a little more, so I'm just going to delete out a chunk. And again, be careful when you're racing because you can easily fall down the path of trying to perfect things. That's not what we're trying to do with this. We're just trying to learn about our layout and feel our way through something that will feel good. But the cool thing with uh, Photoshop, don't get too dependent on it, you can move and transform. But you really shouldn't be doing that too much because you can always do another thumbnail that's more in the position that you're interested in. I'm kind of liking this better because uh, it feels a little more dynamic. There's some more motion. I'm going to have a windmill in it. And I'd want a white spot in there just to kind of be the windmill. And you can see that you would get kind of like that. A thumbnail. Now, the reason I would recommend if you've got a pen, this would have been done in like 20 seconds with a pen. But if all you've got is a trackpad and you can't even get the brush to go, this is absolutely fine. This is a beautiful thumbnail. The only issue I have with it is how long it has taken. All right. So you can see that we're working our way through some thumbnails. Now, what if you have something else like, uh, say, a tablet? Well, that's fine too. Just grab that. Uh, pen or that brush and in fact you're in a better position I'm going to grab my tablet right here and now you can uh, quickly do a thumbnail and by doing it quickly you will be done sooner <laughs> Uh, you can move on to the next idea. You may have you may have a lot of ideas. This is a terrible horse. There we go. Poor little horse. Not his fault. Okay. No Picasso, but hey, <laughs> still still doing the thumbnail job. I'm gonna drop that down, and again, I'm still, I'm still thinking. I kind of like the windmill idea. <sighs> All right, and then you've got another thumbnail. Voila! If you have, you have, you have a tablet. That's fine. Um, this this is it. That's all you need for thumbnails. But the issue is that you have to do it so many times it starts to become very time consuming. So uh, yeah, just uh, keep keep doing them, keep doing them, keep doing them. Again, uh, pen's probably going to be the, the best way to do it if you have a way to capture it. If you don't have a way to capture it, anything else is fine. If you want to do this in MS Paint, I'm fine with that. I just need them eventually to be brought into Photoshop. So when everything is said and done and you're happy with all of this, do the same old trick as always. Click on the topmost active layer, Control Alt Shift E, and voila, you've got a flattened duplicate. 
And uh, now we're ready to actually assemble, start assembling. We'll say that we finished all these, even though we have not finished all these, because you don't want to have to sit here and watch me doodle out thumbnails for the next, uh, what, what would this be? Another half hour, two hours? Oh, no, don't even worry about it. Okay, so this is going to have to be resized. I'm going to move it to new document to do that. And the way I'm going to do that is right click on this layer and then tell it to duplicate the layer. And instead of duplicating it to the same document, I'm going to make a new document and I'm going to not even name it, tell it okay. So we've got this new untitled document, close up my old one, got this new untitled document, going to go to image, image size, it's already the right height, yay. I'm going to make it 150 pixels per inch and this is the size it'll be. See how we lost some detail? That's fine. That is perfectly fine. Uh, the reason that that's okay is that they're thumbnails. So don't don't even, again, don't even worry about it. So now we've got our thumbnail. Maybe we scanned in our thumbnails. Maybe we took a photo of it, but we're, we're absolutely set. So time to create the assignment 14 file. So our assignment, sorry, 13 file, misread that. The assignment 13 file using the standard naming convention. This is going to be, boom. Control N for new or file new. Yeah, you'll get there. Uh, this is going to be eight and a half inches wide, 11 inches tall, 150 pixels per inch. We're going to name this correctly just from the start. Last name goes here. First name goes there, boom. Uh, I'm going to use the working RGB. That's the sRGB IEC 6, 1966 version 2.1 right there. Uh, standard RGB color, 8-bit. Boom. Paste that thing in. Oh, I forgot. I didn't copy it. Control A, Control C. Uh, paste that thing in. So we, and why did I paste it? Well, it's another way to do it. Just wanted to show you all the ones. So how many thumbnails are here? Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That's the minimum. And really that's what you should be aiming for. And I have them all on one page. So I'm going to say thumbnails one through 25. If you have two pages, uh, label however many thumbnails you have on them. So like if the first one, say you did one you didn't like and you had come in and you like scratched it out. So now you need a whole new page of thumbnails. And maybe you did that a couple of times and you're like, oh, that one didn't work. Things went wrong, whatever. You just scratch those out. So now you need a page that just has three thumbnails. So be it. Oops. We have a page with just three thumbnails. So what we're going to do is label these thumbnails one through, in this case, uh, 22. Thumbnails 23 to 25. Just counting, that's all. All right, so we've got our thumbnails. Uh, and that's about set, except these need to be in uh, folders. So what we're going to do is make our folder for this, and this will be called thumbnails folder. So we're folder, I'm sorry, groups. We need to make a group for this, and this will be our thumbnails group. Thumbnails. And then you grab them and toss them in, and you've got your thumbnails group. Ta-da, isn't that great? Uh, from here, it's time to start going on to our roughs. So we'd pick our four favorite thumbnails and we would produce uh, four roughs. So we'll do that in the next video. Uh, although I should say this, because this would go on the, on the thumbnails. Um, on the thumbnail, how do we pick our favorite? We go in, grab a red. This will be the pencil tool. And I grabbed the wrong thing. This will be under the brush. We've got the pencil tool. And then you just circle it as best you can and you pick your four favorites even though they're next to each other I'm going to do one circle at a time all right oops and then you want to save that using your naming convention I forgot to put an 01 at the end of that my bad so we need to go in and adjust that how we do that Go over to the file. Boop. There we go. All right. So after we've picked our uh, favorites, we're going to uh, go ahead and make some roughs, and they're just going to be bigger versions of these. So we'll do that in the next video.